Hey, what is going on, everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and I'll be honest, it seems like it's been quite a while, and I think it's been a long time since I've done one of these gameplay commentaries. But you know what? Before anyone complains about it, the footage I am using and the game I'm using is extremely relevant to the situation and the topic I'm going to be talking about. So that's why we're going back to gameplay here, at least for this video. Am I completely against gameplay? No, I just really haven't used it recently because, I don't know, just haven't really felt like it. But we're going to be talking about The Last Guardian, kind of my first impressions in a way, but it's not really a first impressions video. It's more talking about other people's impressions and some of the general review issues I've seen. And I'm just trying to figure this stuff out. Now, I'm by no means trying to fanboy or trying to defend the game to my grave, but... I'll kind of just get into the topic here of what I'm trying to discuss. A lot of people I've seen have said this game is boring, it's slow paced, the camera's bad, um, it's just it's not living up to their expectations. And the question I want to ask here is, first off, did you all play the previous titles that were in this, I guess, quote unquote, series of games? Just the games that are from this developer. Those games I'm talking about are Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. Now, if you did not play those games, okay, I can understand your criticism. You're not really used to this style of game. It's understandable. If you did play those games or you're somebody who even went as far as to play them repeatedly and you claim that you love them, my question to you is... When was the last time you played the games, and how did you not expect this? You see, when I first played Eco, now, I love that game right there. When I first played it, I was pretty captivated by it. You start off as this boy with horns, you find this princess, and you're trying to escape this castle. Sounds like a really simplistic, weird, depressing version of a Mario game, right? I mean, it, it kind of is, in a way. Uh, but that's really how the game is, and it's also one of those games where it is a puzzle game. It's a bit slow. Yeah, it does have combat to it, but it's still, you know, it, it can get frustrating at times. You're trying to figure things out, and it's just a slow-paced game. And that really set the genre for the type of, I don't know, eco style of games, which we then saw reflected just in a different setting on Shadow of the Colossus. Now, Shadow of the Colossus, storyline-wise, quite different. You're a guy at the beginning, you have to end up waking up some girl, and the only way you can get her to wake up and come out of her comatose state is to defeat all the colossi in the world. So, different story, kind of same end goal right there where you're trying to save a chick, but you're still getting the same type of art style, the same type of direction. It is still a puzzle game at its core, even though some people will say, yeah, it's boss fight after boss fight. It's still a puzzle game when you truly go through it. Now we're getting the same thing with Shadow of the Colossus, where it's the same type of art style, the same type of direction, same type of gameplay in a way, but a different storyline there, where you end up waking up as this boy, you have this big giant creature that you have to help out named Trico, and then you're just kind of adventuring with him and trying to get back to your village. Now again, completely different setup, completely different storyline, but same general concept when it comes to the gameplay of it, where there's going to be combat, there's going to be puzzles you have to solve, and there's just going to be that natural progression, and really, if it seems like I'm doing a general job of explaining it, it's because this is more of a art style and game that you have to play through yourself to really understand the, I guess I want to call it, eco feel. Really, if you've played eco, you're going to expect that same type of feeling from Shadow of the Colossus. And if you've played Shadow of the Colossus and you've played eco or you've just played one of them, you should probably expect that same type of thing from The Last Guardian. Now, first off, one of the criticisms is the camera's not good, the camera's had issues. I, I will fully agree with you on that, and I don't think I had those issues on Eco, but I remember Shadow of the Colossus did give me some issues. In fact, if I remember correctly, I never played on PS2, I played it on PS3, but if I remember correctly, they actually ended up fixing a good amount of the camera issues on the PlayStation 3 remake of it, so the PS2 version did have those issues. It also didn't perform as well, so there's a lot a lot of people that say the PS2 version was better for all these different reasons, and really, you kind of just need to take off your nostalgia glasses. Now, I did play Eco when I was younger. I played Shadow of the Colossus for the first time through about a year ago, so I was able to go through Shadow of the Colossus without 
nostalgia glasses. However, even when I was playing Eco, I still thought it was a very well done game. Again, it also did have its issues, as did Shadow of the Colossus when it came to controls and such, and it was also frustrating at times, but that's what you're going to expect from a puzzle game. But again, just to prevent myself from repeating everything here over and over again, if you've played these games... I don't understand where the misalignment of expectations was for The Last Guardian. I just find it hard to see if you really enjoyed Eco and you really enjoyed Shadow of the Colossus, how you could hate or how you could majorly dislike The Last Guardian. But again, if you have never played those games, you bought this game kind of just with the hype around it and you didn't know what to expect and you didn't like it, I can understand that a little bit more. Now, this kind of comes into play as well, too. Does a sequel need to be the same? Does it need to have that natural progression? Does it need to evolve? Technically, these games aren't sequels of one another. They do have kind of a bit of an overarching theme to them, in a way, and they are in the same style, and some people would even try and say they're in the same universe, but really, are they direct sequels to each other? No, they're not. They really aren't. So it is a bit unfair to try and claim these are all sequels to one another. However, I do respect that as an art style and as a, you know, just natural progression, they did kind of just bump up and change things a bit, but they still kept the same core gameplay and the fundamentals and all that stuff right there. So if you were somebody who played the older games, you're going to kind of just fit right into this one right here. And they didn't go completely crazy because am I one of those people that believes, you know, the sequels have to be the same no I mean it, it really depends on what it is am I one of those people that thinks that sequels need to have change and differences of them yeah to a degree I think if it's implemented well it could be interesting we're going to see different changes one thing would be the Call of Duty series for example where Call of Duty 1 through 3 were old school games and then Call of Duty 4 all of a sudden they went into modern warfare that was a extreme change when it came to the campaign when it came to gameplay when it came to really everything especially the multiplayer and even just the prestige system that they added in on there but in my opinion that was actually a excellent change very well done and holds the regard for being one of the best first person shooters out there and really kind of resetting the genre in a way at least when it came out in 2007 now what did call of duty do it ended up evolving even more they ended up throwing in more stuff and more stuff where in modern warfare 2 we could akimbo everything and then it got to the point where when we had infinite warfare well they decided to add jetpacks and they went so hard with the jetpacks that even the damn grenades fly everywhere. It's no longer limited to the players. The grenades fly. The grenades have wings on them. So thankfully we didn't evolve from Shadow the Colossus to a ultra mega colossi game with the character from Eco in there trying to save like two princesses and throwing grenades everywhere. Thankfully it's nothing like that. It is still something that's familiar and you know kind of simple enough to us in a way and something that we could enjoy if you are a legacy player or a newcomer when it comes to this game. However my final real thoughts on this are when it comes to discussing it with other people it should have been expected. If you play the other games, this was to be expected. And right now, I'm quite happy with the game because the game is, it's meeting my expectations. That's what I'll say. I had played the other games in the series. I was like, I got the art style down. I got kind of the progression down. This is what I expect. I got Last Guardian. It's really exactly what I expected. Just kind of in a bit of a different setting because, you know, you're dealing with Trico here and everything. Although I will say the valid criticism right here is... Yes, the camera is not very good on it, and I don't I don't know why Team Eco somehow screwed that up again, but hopefully now with the advent of patches and everything, we can get this patched up and we can get it fixed. Or they'll give us at least a new camera option and give us then the option to go from the original camera or the modified camera that they hopefully patch in later. Now, if you have played The Last Guardian or you've played the other games you're thinking of picking it up, let me know what you think of it because I would like to know what other people are thinking of this game. People that have played the game, Game, not people who are just seeing reviews and all that because again in my opinion the best reviews you can get are from trusted people who have played the game and a review that you give of the game yourself after you try it out or play it a bit but anyways this is mr mario signing off thank you all for watching everyone if you enjoyed this video let me know a like would be very much appreciated and if you hated this video because you hate these style of games and last guardian has the worst camera in the whole entire world you can dislike the video as well too doesn't matter too much.